And TV once again. My name is Hank. My little cousin Angeline got this motherfucker popping, and we're doing big things. We in O'Fallon Park right now, and I can't O'Fallon Park. I'm in the office of O'Fallon Park. If you're from St. Louis, you know the office in O'Fallon Park. But these old country ass niggas acting like feminism is gonna get them locked up. Nigga, you ain't doing shit but drinking a beer and smoking a blunt, but it's all good. I know niggas camera shot and woody wop wop whoop. So we gonna let that be. So we came over here in the corner in O'Fallon Port to let you know Good Man TV is still going on and it's gonna continue to go on. Rather, these old wannabe gangsters, old lame males, niggas of joy, join in, participate or not. So, with that being said, I'm through bashing my brothers. I love them. But, you know, niggas do nigga things. It's not going to be a nigga moment ever on Good Man TV. You know what a nigga moment is. You watch the Boondocks. If you watch the Boondocks, you know what a nigga moment is. It'll never be a nigga moment on Good Man TV because we don't do nigga moments. But with that being said, we in a beautiful, come on, Penguin. We in a beautiful St. Louis, Missouri. O'Fallon Park where shit really pops off at. Sometimes it's crime, sometimes it's love. But it always pops off in O'Fallon Park. You hear me? So, I'm going to ask some questions. Okay, let the director ask me some questions. What you got to say? So, uh, when you was coming up, what part of St. Louis you grew up in? North St. Louis. Matter of fact, I grew up about 10 blocks away on 20th and Prairie. 10 blocks. We used to run up here. And if, uh, come on, let me pan up here as we was kids. We used to go down here in these woods. Uh -huh. And if you go in these woods, it's trenches with racing cars done wrecked down up in there. Stolen cars been thrown in ditches up in here in this woods. I can't take you up in there because I don't think the director gonna go up in there. But, hey, it's, it's fun. We used to, as kids, we rode our bikes through there. We ran through there. We took our dogs through there. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a couple of them. This is one of them. This is another one on the other side of the park. That's how big the park is. It got wilderness. With so trenches and ditches. I up at 8, 9, 10 years old. It was a pretty good place in St. Louis at that time. Oh, man. 8, 9, 10 year old. I actually had white people living on Peru. On the north side, huh? On North St. Louis was mostly all white. When you was a kid? When I was 5, 6 years old, I had a white neighbor named June. June and, uh, June and Ray. They had a lot sold up. Private fence with a swimming pool. I was always willing to go. They used to give me that caramel candy, the little caramel candy, little squares. Uh -huh. They used to give it to me every day. Hey, Hank, you come home from school? Here you go. Hey, it's getting hot outside. Y'all want to get in the pool? That was for the neighborhood, but at that time, it wasn't nothing like two black families on the block, mm -hmm. and the rest was white. So, of course, they indulged the little black kids into it. So, North Side was dominantly just white? Oh, North Side was dominant. Missouri was dominant white. St. Louis, Missouri is mostly white, but as when you can see, black folks start coming in North Side. Really? I saw they really start coming in. I say the early '80s, like '82, '83. Then you see more black families and more white families moving out. More black families when them, the more the white, the more the white people moved out, more blacks moved in. And before you know it, it became what they as they what they call it a ghetto. So when the first time it started getting bad, what year you remember? Oh, the year it started getting bad, i tell you what, I was like 11, 10 years old. It was in the 80s, 1987. 1987, colors came out, the whole thing started explode, imploding on itself. They was already robbing and stealing and, you know, doing what they do. But when colors came out, Oh, now we got a reason to kill this black man. Cause that nigga got on red. That nigga got on blue. You know what I'm saying? It gave us... <laughs> I don't want to say gave us a meaning. But at the same time, it gave them a reason to kill freely. To do ignorant shit freely. At first, they was robbing just to eat. They was stealing just to eat. Now, we got drugs going on. Now, game banging came in with the drug thing. And then gave us a reason to go ham. So when the first time, you know, the Bloods and Crips started? Like I say, about 87, 88. 
when I can say the movie Colors. It was already, cause I was claiming 107 Hoover, and I didn't know what the fuck a Hoover was. You know, I just wanted to be Crip. Because a lot of little LA Crips came to St. Louis and, you know, plant they seeds. It was 87. It was Crip sets that you won't even hear of today, like 87 Kitchen Crips, 83rd Crips. You know what I'm saying? 107 Hoovers, 22 Hoovers. You know what I'm saying? Six Deuces. These hoods that you didn't hear. You don't hear nowadays. But back then, 83rd was the biggest Crip set that we known on the north side. Then it was 87 Kitchen Crips. It was Six Deuces. You know what I'm saying? It was just all LA gangs and pretty much. When shit St. Louis based. Everything was from LA. Shit that people seen or people that came here just started doing. But, I tell you what, in the 1990s, everybody from St. Louis, they started going against this little L.A. kick. Fuck Compton, nigga. Fuck Inglewood. Fuck South Central. You know what I'm saying? And that's when you start getting 37 rows. That's when you start getting DST. That's when you start getting a dub block. That's when you start getting 19th Street. St. Louis streets. Fofo Bud. We started getting St. Louis streets and started claiming St. Louis streets. And when we did that, L.A. pretty much left St. Louis. Fuck L.A. like these niggas are strong, they coming on, they doing their thing, so we got to Van Moose because we ain't number 20 deep. Well, we ain't number 5 or 10 deep. These niggas 60, 70 deep. And they claiming this. So we ain't going to last very long. Ain't that Ice Cube song say, boom, St. Louis niggas want their corners back. Yeah. It was real talk because niggas started claiming their own hood then. We started claiming St. Louis streets, not LA 60s and rolling 30s and rolling 60s and hey, you know what I'm saying? We stopped claiming that bullshit and started claiming our own shit. When we started claiming our own shit, LA realized, oh, okay, it's time for us to move on. That's when they went to uh Chicago, Seattle, and all the other states because they realized St. Louis got this sold up. But it, either way it go, it was all ignorant. It was all stupid shit. But I felt good having my street claiming pre ab dub blocker, dub blocker de Soto, dub blocker Prairie, the dub blocker John, 20th Street, 19th Street. It was good to claim though. I started feeling good about it, even though I was stupid wrong about it. But it felt good about it because I'm claiming St. Louis. I'm no longer claiming LA rolling 60s and rolling 30s and all that other bullshit. I felt good about claiming St. Louis, so I started banging harder because it was a St. Louis based clip. Now I'm claiming my block. Now every other block can get it. Fuck what you talking about, nigga. This dub block of pre ab nigga. Everybody can get it. Nigga, this North Side Gangster Crip. And you know, Crips back in the early 90s and late 80s was the strongest. Lil Wayne came out here and made blood just run like blood from a gunshot wound. We just flooded. <laughs> flooded St. Louis. Everybody bloods now. Ain't no real Crips up in here, but OG Crips. And these OG's crib like, nigga, I ain't banging no more, but I tell you what, this little nigga say, crap to me one more again, I'm going to smack the bottom jaw off his ass. But we ain't banging, though. But it's just a simple fact of respect. Yeah. All we asked was respect. Because I, I was a North Side Gangster Crib, Dub Block, 19th Street, all my life. All my life. I don't think I've been nothing different besides 107 Hoop. Other than that, and that's when I was 12 and 11, didn't know what what was. But once I hit 15 on up, nigga, where you from? Northside, gangster, crib, dub block, 19th Street. I ain't trying to be gang related, but I'm just telling you how I felt at this time when I was coming up in the 90s. You know what I'm saying? Everything else is irrelevant. I'm just telling you my life and what I went through and what I grew to do. All right. Now, I'm 42 years old. Bloods done took over the scene. I ain't mad about it, I don't even give a fuck. You know, one nation is even better. If everybody claim blood, then that means it's less, it's less beef. So I ain't mad about it either way. It could be all bloods, it could be all crip. As long as it's just one nation taking over the scene, let it be. That's less murder, less crime for us, young black people. 
Go ahead, cut it, cut it, cut it.